Bloomberg Economics editor David Tweed has been on a fast fact-finding trip across the continent. That's right, Mark. I got to take from this trip, I got to take my first ferry ride. I went from Copenhagen right up to Oslo, which of course is the capital of Norway. That's a country that did relatively well in the recession, just a 1.5% contraction in 2009. And the government's forecasting a relatively strong performance this year. But the really impressive figure is this one. No budget, uh, uh, no budget deficit. They're looking to have a budget surplus of more than 10% this year. And as for jet debt to GDP, they don't have anything at all. But it's not all sunshine and roses for the Norwegians. Oil production peaked, and I wanted to find out what they're doing to prepare for that. into Oslo, the capital of Norway, a country made rich beyond its dreams by its North Sea oil. But production's peaked. And so what I want to find out today is what is this country doing to prepare for what must surely be leaner times ahead? One of the first things you notice when you arrive in the port is the new opera house. Modern, sleek, discreet. In fact, just about anywhere you walk here in Oslo, you just don't see those signs of conspicuous consumption that you'd normally associate with oil-rich countries. And that's by design. Fifteen years ago, Norway started stashing away its oil revenue into what is now the world's second largest sovereign wealth fund. One of its aims was to keep the economy from overheating by investing oil income abroad. Will Norway be able to keep this system going? I found myself on a train in search of an answer in the middle of Norway's summer holiday season. Two hours south of Oslo, I caught up with an economist and asked him whether his country is prepared for declining oil wealth. I don't think the average Norwegian is very much aware of uh that fact. We've become accustomed to um, not facing any liquidity crisis, having all that money that can be used to prop up spending to avoid a recession like neighboring, neighboring countries. Back on the outskirts of Oslo, I went to see a small business owner. He's concerned the generous welfare system has encouraged some Norwegians to take advantage. A lot more people receive uh, welfare benefits in Norway. Um, we see that both with uh, unemployment benefits, uh, sick leave, uh, and pensions. Um, so I think a, lo a lot of our sort of our, 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 our working class, our working, working population uh, are on some sort of state-sponsored benefits. That's the view of the economist and the auto dealer. What about the man on the street? The majority of these people who are on this welfare system uh, it's made them actually more lazy in that sense that they know that there is always a backup. We have lived on oil for so long and the fact that it's running out hasn't, I think it hasn't quite dawned on people yet. So as I look at Norwegians now, seemingly carefree, I can't help but wonder what will happen as the days of rapid wealth creation enter the twilight. And David joins me now. I mean, the Norwegian Central Bank met yesterday, decided to keep rates on hold. Are they worried about growth? You know, like the Bank of England, they cited concerns about what's going on in the US. So they're concerned about what's happening in the rest of the world, the global economy, because obviously that impacts Norwegian exports, not just the oil exports, but the other industries that they've got from fishery to uh, any other exports that they're doing. Interesting thing, though, just about the strength of the economy, they started raising rates back in October. They were the first European central bank to actually do it and they've raised rates three times since then looks like they'll probably be on hold until the beginning of next year though how has the hike in rates affected the currency you've seen the currency really doing pretty well it's 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 risen more than 20 percent against the euro since the beginning of 2009 10 percent against the dollar uh, in the same period and 
I was actually very interested in asking people about that while I was there, whether this would have an impact on exporters. But they're pretty sanguine as well because they've had to deal with an exchange rate at the same level before, uh, so they don't have to do anything special. They know how to actually cope with a, a, an exchange rate at this level. I mean, peak production was the theme of your piece. Ah people concerned? Are they worried about, about peak oil production? Look, it's something that's sneaking into the yeah. debate, but it's not something completely new, I have to say. I mean, production peaked between 2000 and 2001. This year, it'll probably, probably decline. The debate's pretty much centred on whether Norwegians are becoming complacent, whether they've got too many people taking advantage of this extremely generous social benefits uh, system. Um, and as you saw, some people are, are saying that uh, some of the Norwegians who are on it are getting lazy. But, uh, you know, long-term labour productivity in Norway, very, very high. A quick... Uh promo for Sweden, Sweden tomorrow. Sweden, we're going to Sweden. Now they've got something unusual going on. They've got a property boom. Oh gosh, there you go. That's a thing of the past. Now